Peter on the frame. Hagiography, the surreal images of photographer Hag. Now, totally composed, the work of photographer Hag. The process I use is called combination printing, uh, which, not, which actually goes back a long way. These days we have computer manipulation, of course, where technically it's very easy for anyone to put something together, in theory. However, the quality of what you put together is very much dependent on the ideas you have and the quality of the photography, which has to be good if it's going to work. If I'm doing a picture for myself, the ideas often just come from a picture, a photograph I have that I like that I might be able to do something with, and it develops organically. But this is the baseboard that I use, that I move around each enlarger. It has a, it has a line drawing of all the elements of the image on it, which you can see in the correct position. Uh, this is the negative has a pake on it where I painted out the sky and made a soft edge here where I want the building to blend into the tree. Uh, the opaque is this water-based stuff that you can squad around very nicely, make a nice mess with and also wipe it off when you get it wrong and do it again. It's a bit of the name of the game, a good bit of patience. The baseboard, of course, goes under the enlarger and the negative goes in the negative carrier uh, without destroying it. Uh, the enlarger is just like a projector, it projects the image down onto the paper. The paper goes underneath here. Where we'll find another mask. The paper mask is actually used for the sky. There's also some bits of tape here that also give soft edges well below the lens which blend the elements together. I didn't get into university. I applied for everything from theology to ergonomics and cybernetics. This man didn't know what he wanted to do. I did know what I wanted to do. I wanted to leave home with a grant. That was my only ambition really. Uh, and then I came across photography. Um, my girlfriend had a very fine set of photographs, so I applied for college, a very good college, uh, with her photographs and got accepted, which was wonderful. So after college, I worked, started to work as a freelance printer and built my own darkroom and just started to develop my own style just because I wanted to work freely. When I make a picture, it has a personal meaning for me in the sense that it works when it has a resonance for me. What that resonance is varies. Yes, it might have some resonance in, in terms of environmental issues, or it might just work as a visual icon. That's what I put into it. Now, if, if you've done a successful picture, someone else looking at it will get their own interpretation out of it. If they do that, then the, the idea and the image has worked. It's not for me to say how you should interpret it. For instance, the storm in a teacup was originally a commissioned image for, to advertise a, a black and white laboratory for a trade magazine. And I went in there with just a list of ideas. I came up with all the ideas, about five or six different ideas. The easiest one of the lot I thought to do was storm in a teacup, which he chose, uh, which was great. I thought, oh, that's easy. So I shot the cop and I shot the water, the rain coming down from the cloud. And then I started searching for the cloud. Now I spent all my life photographing clouds, a bit obsessed with photographing clouds. Uh, and I went through my entire collection. I could only find one cloud that was actually suitable. And the picture has ended up being one cloud and the other clouds behind are another load of clouds. And then the rain and the storm was put in. But I had a lot of difficulty with it. This picture was one that I did for Pink Floyd's recording studio, which was originally intended to have coat hooks coming out of it for 
people to hang their coats on, but no one actually dared drill the holes in it when it was finished. It was five foot by nine foot. Uh, this picture here was originally done as an album cover. Uh, the original picture was just the same as this, and it had the artist's face in here. And I later redid it, putting the pagoda in, which I took a long time over. And I was very poor at the time, which was very odd. Thinking, what am I doing spending all this time and money doing this? And it was some years later when I got involved with Athena uh, and they started putting out posters that they actually produced this one, which for a long time was the second best seller. It's strange how things come around.